Hello my creative friends. Today I am making my December thank you cards. If you placed a Stampin' Up! order with me in the month of December, you should be getting one of these cards in the mail very soon. I've waited to make these December cards because I wanted to make something for you from the new spring catalog and I knew that I couldn't film a video or show it until the spring catalog went live. For today's card, I'm actually using inspiration from the first page, or I guess it's page three of the spring catalog, and it's this cute little hello card. I'm going to be using the hexagons, and I'm going to be using the T for Two designer series paper. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is a piece of Whisper White paper. It's four and a quarter by 11, and it's scored in half, folded in half. The next thing we're going to use is the Honeycomb Textured Impressions Embossing Folder. It makes these great little hexagons. And this piece of paper is still Whisper White. It's four and an eighth by five and three eighths, so just an eighth of an inch smaller. And I find when I get brand new um, embossing folders, when I run it through my Big Shot, I just run it with no tabs um, and then after a while, I don't know if it just smushes it down, then I go back to the recommended um, tab one. But what I find with my brand new um, embossing folders, when I run it through on tab one, it, it almost makes too deep of an impression. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through the embossing folder. What you do, experiment and find what works best for you. But like I said, for the brand new ones, I use no tabs, a clear plate my embossing folder with a whisper white piece and another clear plate and then I'm going to run it through the big shot. I'll be right back. And here's what you end up with. Both sides as per usual are really nice. I would be happy to use either one. The next thing I'm going to do is pull out this T for Two designer series paper and I if you're like me, you like to see it in person, and I know this isn't in person, but sometimes the video shows up a little bit better than the catalog, so I'm just going to quickly flip through this um, just to show you the paper. So here it is, both sides. This paper would be really nice um, for scrapbooking if you do scrapbooking because there's soft subtle patterns on one side and on the flip side it's a little bit bolder. So if you what I like to do is to use the softer side as just the background for my pictures and then I might punch out some of these circles and make a border or cut it in a strip um, and, or use a brighter cardstock to do a title. So if you're a scrapbooker, this pack is a really nice pack for that. So there we go. I'm just using these two pieces today that are on top. What I did was I cut, one of the papers has um, like a uh, book print or newsprint on one side and this fun stripe on the other, chevron looking stripe. Um, I just cut it into one inch strips and then I stamped. Now I can't stamp for you. Let me do it so you can see, read it. I can't stamp this one for you because it's a celebration stamp. I thought celebration went live at the same time as a spring catalog, but celebration does not start until I believe January 22nd, 2013. But I will tell you, this is from the Vintage Verses. And what I did was I stamped it in Calypso Coral, and then I huffed on it and stamped it again in Calypso Coral. And you can see the difference between stamping full on ink and stamping off on the ink. Another thing you can do if you like the lighter one and you don't want to do the darker is just um, ink it in your ink pad and then stamp off on a piece of scrap paper and then stamp it on whatever you're going to use. But using these designer, I mean using the the printed paper to stamp on is a really fun um, trick.
Either one will work, but the Calypso Coral ink pad for me is a brand new one, and it is so juicy that uh, the details don't quite show up on the first stamp. So I noticed that stamping off makes the details in the stamp image itself show up better. But as time goes on and I use that ink pad more, I know that um, both will be perfectly fine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut it basically in half. Doesn't really matter where. I'm not doing exact measurements. Um, I just need maybe half an inch at the end of the sentiment. And if you want to make this right now before the celebration happens, almost any sentiment would work. I think this would be fun with celebrate or happy birthday, um, any of your thanks. Wordplay has thanks a million. That would work too. What I'm going to do is just cut down the middle with my paper snips. So I don't know if you can see. I cut down the middle and then I'm going to cut from each side to that middle point. And, and you have that nice little notched end. Now for the other end, what I'm going to do is flip it over and just add some snail adhesive to the end. Take your Calypso Coral um, Baker's Twine. Figure out where you want to start it. Just stick the tail into the back end and wrap it around. If you want it straight, just make sure that it's lined up with the lines of the text in the back. And just wrap it around as many times as you want. I did probably five, seven times. Then you're just going to flip it over and trim the back side. My next step is to get some hexagons to put into these hexagons here. Now, currently Stampin' Up! does not carry a hexagon punch I have requested it and if you want it you can request anything you want really from Stampin' Up! They really do listen and the more people that request things the more likely they are to come out with it. But like I said right now they don't have a hexagon punch. What you can do is you can run your designer series paper through the um, through the big shot with your hexagon folder and then use those score lines to cut them out yourself. You can just freehand cut it but I actually have this old hexagon punch, so that's what I'm going to use to punch mine out. You just slide it in and punch. And I have a whole bunch of punched out hexagons ready to go. I like to just randomly place them. Now that I have a bunch of these hexagons kind of laid out where I think I'm going to want them, I found the easiest thing for me was to just take my snail and put a little bit of snail into that hexagon and stick the punched out piece on top. As you can see, this one is off the edge a little bit. What you do is just take your paper snips and snip it off. Our next step is to just take the dimensionals off the back of the banner that we made. I lined it up on the edge here 
and then I use the honeycomb guide as my guide to try and get it as straight as I could. Now I'm going to add dimensionals in each corner. Make sure your card is opening the correct way and then just center it on the front of your card. And here we have the December 2012 thank you card. I want to thank each and every one of you for being my customers. Be watching next week for the January card. I'm not going to wait as long to show you that one. Um, again, with some of the new products from the new spring catalog. If you do not currently have a demonstrator and you would like one, feel free to contact me. Um, you can either go to my blog, www.heatherscreativeblessings.blogspot.com, and from there you can click on my Stampin' Up! shopping site, or you can email me at creativeblessings at hotmail.com and just let me know that you're interested. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you find some time today to get a little bit creative. Bye!